Praise God. Greetings to you, our precious and valued viewers. Welcome to Choices. You know, it's always a joy when we can meet and discuss matters of great importance to us, families, and the world at large. One such as we are presently discussing parenting. One of our own author on this set, Dr. Paul Benjamin, in his book, Empowered to Parent, and I quote, one of the central premises behind the Boeing family system theory is that families and people in them function as one emotional system. This gives us the idea of the working of the body. Every member is closely connected and depends on each to function efficiently. Let's learn more of what we need to maintain healthy families as we listen to these mighty men of God. Please stay tuned. We want you to be blessed. As parents, we want to, we're going to share ideas to help you. God bless you, and God continue to bless beautiful and progressive Guyana. Thank you. You know, the, the family could be described as the cornerstone of society, shaping the lives of individuals and contributing to the overall health and stability of communities. And these are serious um, suggestions here. The cornerstone of society, the family contributes to shaping the lives of individuals and the health of individuals that contribute to stability. The significance of the family is also reflected in its enduring impact on emotional well-being, socialization, economic stability, education, cultural identity, community engagement, health, resilience, and intergenerational support. Now, these listen to, 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 to this setting here. So, when we think about establishing a family, if we think about the consideration of all these things, we will recognize that it is a humongous task. It's more than just sexual contact. A man and a woman and children are being produced. All of these elements must be taken into consideration for the family to be effective, to be efficient, and to be progressive. And so any society, any nation that is going to be transformed or sits upon the precipice of transformation, the family is fundamental. Or else every time you try to go forward, you end up going backward because the value system and the people who are integral to the transformation process, if that is faulty, well, then we begin to recognize why we will have instability, why we have confusion, chaos, and so on. And so what we really want to do is to keep um, hitting away at the point that this whole thing about parenting, it's important, it is significant, not only for the well-being of the nation, but for that family itself. You have to think about finances, you have to think about food, clothing, housing. So before we start to you know, engage in, in, in sexual activity with millions, so we must understand what it is that we are doing. Because we need to have a country that is stable and we need to have less energy expended in correcting when energy could be expended in advancing. Gentlemen. Oh, what an introduction. Thank you, Dr. Hudson. Um, and thank you for putting the ball in the black hole, identifying the value and the importance of parenting 
and community parenting as well, where it involves the father and the mother and the community, the church, the school, the neighbors. Um, I am reminded of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, that says, train up a child, train up a child. And I underline the word train up. You know, because for too long, our children are allowed to develop by accident, you know. Accidental development is chaotic because you're not quite sure where you're going to end up train up a child. Um, you, as an educator, will talk about the holistic education policy. <laughs> um, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. As I get older, I am amazed how some of the skills that I was taught, and I didn't even see the relevance and the importance. As you get older, you recognize the value of being taught those skills. And that is what we're encouraging each other to do today. Yeah. As you made mention of that um, portion of scripture, three thoughts come to mind, teaching, timing, and truth. Allow me to present this scenario. I saw this. The mother was in the kitchen preparing dinner. The husband and the father on the couch with his gadget. And the three children were around daddy with their gadgets also. But the kitchen sink was filled with wares. And mom had completed preparing dinner. And she took the pot to the dining table with a spoon, sat at the dining table, and began to eat from the pot. Dad looked across, the children looked across, with an expectation that mom would have been laying the table for them. She didn't do that. She kept eating from that pot. The big child came to the realization and went to the sink and wash his dish and went to mom as she put his food in his plate and he sat. And subsequently, that pattern followed. Dad continued to sit on the couch with the hope that mom was going to wash the, his plate and put his food on the table. And she sat there and eventually he himself got up and went to the sink and wash his plate, and he was served. I'm thinking, at, you know, I made mention of teaching, timing, and truth. A lot of persons will want to dispute the action of mom, but teaching, mom cooking, dad on the couch with his gadget, and the children with their gadget, and the wares in the sink. How do we help our children to understand when they are following the pattern of one parent, believing that the other parent have the responsibility to ensure that all things are in order for the family. Well, it, it, it's quite a lot of food mom had on the table there in that pot. You didn't <laughs> tell us the size of the pot. <laughs> but um, the, the, the critical point there is that um, teaching and training um, they go hand in hand um, from infancy or even in utero, in the strain children. And the training is not the sole preserve of mothers. Um, fathers must be a part of it. And we train not only by the precepts that we talk or we preach or we say, um, we train by our actions also. And, you know, um, you know we, we learn in school you know, um, to um, fail to prepare is to prepare to fail. And raising children require a whole attitudinal change. Um, we, we have to be cognizant of the fact that children are young, impressionable minds. And uh, while they may not, at the tender age, be able to ask questions or to, um, you know, state how they feel about something, they are observing our very action. And so sometimes, you know, we wonder 
why the child behave this way or that way. And we say, I didn't teach you that, or we didn't teach you that. But inevitably, they learn from our actions. So we have to be extremely careful about the things that we display um, in their presence or in their absence, the things we say um, that they might be listening to. Oftentimes, you know, we, we, we conduct ourselves in inappropriate ways in front of our children. Sometimes they might be locked in their rooms, but they're listening to us. And so the attitudinal change um, that is required, that is that we must be aware that children learn from us, not merely by what we say, but the attitudes that we display. That's so true, Dr. Lee, because um, when we examine the whole notion of parenting, it is important for parents to be that example, to be that role model, and to have that can-do attitude because they are not only taking up their responsibility, but they are raising the next generation who will go on to take those same responsibilities as parenting. You know, I stumbled upon a quote from Matt Walsh, and uh, I thought it's very apt for me to share it with us today. He said, parenting is the easiest thing in the world to have an opinion about. But the hardest thing is in the world, the hardest thing in the world to do. So parenting is the easiest thing in the world to have an opinion about, but the hardest thing in the world to do. And, and that is why we want to really encourage those children, encourage those parents, rather, not to give up because the, the task is, is great. But in time, what you do, the training of your children, the deliberate training, the caring and the giving of love, the spending quality time, the bond shared between your, your children and yourself, those are critical parenting skills that will enable you to become more competent as parents because oftentimes, uh, you know, there's much talk about the failures and the shortcomings in their daily child-raising experiences. However, Parents, we are encouraging parents that you should reflect ever so often on and celebrate the small wins, those small wins that uh, can encourage you and reinforces self-esteem and help you to become more confident. We cannot overemphasize the fact that Solomon spoke about the value of training. Solomon's advice to parents is to train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, raising and training a child within the context of this proverb means that it begins with the Bible. It begins with teaching the word of God, teaching the children the truths of the scriptures and make them wise, wise for salvation. And let us continue to prepare them to withstand the onslaught of cultures bent on indoctrinating young people with secular values. I and want to go back I want to go back to the the cook up that the pot to cook up that Elder Wesley was telling us about the pot on the table. Um, times have changed, culture changes, and um, the scripture remains constant, and it is explicit and ex and implicit that parents are the ones responsible for training children. But, you know, we continue to see, as culture evolves, that gadgets, television yeah. sets, um, computers, mm -hmm. um, cell phones, 
have become the primary source, mm. source rather, of training our children. Um, that is totally wrong. And so sometimes we go home, you know, we are bent on making ends meet. Um, I'm not criticizing that, but we go home tired and we throw the laptop or we throw the gazette in the child's hand, um, hoping one on one side to keep them quiet if they're small and also to keep them from um, taking up our time as such, um, to keep them, you know, hushed in a corner while we are doing other things. That is not the way to train children, but it has become fashionable now. And so the end product that we see in society um, invariably points to our um, laxity and the way we treat with training children. All of us on the set, we weren't trained that way. It was an intentional effort by our parents to instill values and to instill um, you know, things that shape us so that we can become assets to society. I'm not saying that some um, programs that are aired on social media not good, but that cannot be, or that ought not to be, you know, <laughs> the principal um, teaching agent for our children. Dr. Lee, I, I agree because the whole thing is, um, for me, um, balance, balance is in, in anything. If you lean towards one-sided, um, in terms of a teaching process, uh, you you could find yourself you could find yourself going overboard, and so balance is, is very important. And here is where the concept of of monitoring and supervision together they go together. That concept is key, monitoring and supervision. Um, and I agree with you because I have seen the kind of knowledge the kind of information that could be forthcoming from these gadgets that could enhance this, the, the skills of children and so on. I have also seen the issue of addiction where, um, you know, every minute this is the only thing you want to do to, to, to lean towards that direction. So technology has its place, but I think what is it? We shouldn't abandon it, like you, you're saying, but there should be some kind of balance because I mean, I, I have seen with my own eyes the quickness and, and, and the agility, the ability that has been derived from the use of, of, of technology. But when you're going to use that as the only means of, of your advancement, as the only means of teaching or training, well, then, um, then we have a problem. I also want to add that those parents who might... Um, who might feel that you know depressed or feel frustrated they are people that they, they they could tap into you know i found a strange thing that happened i mean i'm a father i i, I would like to believe that i acknowledge him and so on but um i have a son and my son is approaching 40 years he's approaching for he's 14 he's 14 now and uh, i i heard his mother calling another mother, an older mother with sons, and asking questions. And so sometimes, you know, we we suffer by ourselves. Or of course, you got to know who you're calling, right? <laughs> Not just calling anybody, because you might hear some things that will just um, throw you off your game plan. But I heard that, and I, I heard that, and, and it's something else. I, I, I saw, um, I think it was yesterday you know um i saw i saw a mother checking her son checking his skin and say see the back here you're not washing at the back here and so on. so this thing is not about just making children you know and and uh, and said go to the bathroom and i hear if you don't clean it i would hate you and that kind of, that kind of thing so these are serious these are serious issues that we have to consider consider there must be involvement. And involvement that we've been saying all the time, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be you alone. Where you might you might find that there are gaps and people who have are competent, they have information, bring them on board because as we've been saying all the time, Dr. Paul, what is this? It takes a village to raise a child and what? To keep a community the community to keep a community parents to sane. Keep the parents sane. 
So some people have been coming insane because they have not been engaged in community. And I, that is very important to move yeah. in that direction. And I think, Dr. Hudson, if I may add quickly also, I think it is in those daily child raising experiences where we teach uh, the intangibles. It's an opportunity for us to teach the intangibles of values, values of honesty, you know, values of, of volunteerism. You use those opportunity to teach the children, yes, we are focused on your education. We want you to excel. We want you to do well. But when you have reached those heights attained, we want to ensure that those intangibles are still there. You know, people are honest. People are noteworthy. People you are trusted. And so we want to really encourage people to bring that balance, bring that holistic approach to your children so that they will be rounded. They can um, apply themselves anywhere they go because these children are doing well academically in some instances. And it is, it's just, you're just seeing that a clear path is, is, is there for them to go and, and acquire higher education. They may leave the country, they may leave your home, they may leave the country. How would they operate when they go overseas? How would they operate when they go in a different environment? So we have to train them from now. Don't think on the training. Ensure that they know to, to balance themselves. They are rounded so that when they go out there in the, in, in, in the world, they will be able to be successful. So it's, it's, it's not a big, Herculeous task we want to, to share with you, but it's the simple things. The can-do attitude, you know, the celebrating the small wins and every single day repeating what has worked and coming alongside, loving your children, seeking help from those who are our parents before us and bring that whole sense of village spirit, that community spirit to help to raise those wonderful children that God has blessed us with. Another interesting um, element is grit. You know, you see many parents, uh, well, in, in my position right now, looking at the community and working with the community, you see many parents um, come in and they have real concern and care for the children. But they also realize that the children have some needs that they as parents might not be able to um, fulfill, you know. And they reach out uh, to different institutions and different organizations to help. And I look at that now and I realize that these parents are exhibiting something called grit. It's where they realize that even though they might not be perfect, they refuse to give up on their children and they refuse to stop parenting. And I think that that's an important aspect of, of being a parent. And um, that is something that we should also instill in, in parents coming up because there are many things, there are many challenges that you would have to face uh, as a parent that you might not have been prepared for before. But once you have that grit, that consistency and that unwillingness to give up, uh, that makes a big difference when it comes to molding not only a good adult, but a productive member of society and a leader. And this is, ev I, I, see, I see evidence of this um, every time I'm out there interacting with, with people, especially at the leadership camp, where I was able to see persons who uh, have children and who have grandchildren and you're able to see how they're able to interact and they were literally able to create and to mold these little humans into persons that are valuable in society today. You know, to the point where you have grandparents like possibly playing with the children and all that because they realized that they did a good job as a parent and that, uh, that teaching and that nurturing was also passed down uh, to the children because they refused to give up. The old need for training not just for the children but also for the parents uh, many times we take it for granted that the parents because they are parents they know i think it's dr hudson who highlighted the point of parent coaching and um, parent mentoring uh, which is something we should seriously consider in this kind of environment that we are in because we can't allow the, the, the children to die recklessly. 
and neither can we allow the parents to continue to struggle because they they don't know. I remember having the experience of meeting some parents of some at-risk children, and they demanded that they wanted to meet the facilitator. When I met them, they now want more sessions than the sessions I was having with the with the at-risk children, and I I was shocked by that. So thank you, Dr. Hudson. <laughs> We're talking about involvement, and we have um, Dr. Hudson, former chief education officer here. And sometimes, I, well, I've gone to the Parent Teachers Association meeting at the schools my children attended. And sometimes I was appalled at the fact that sometimes the only time parents visit is to register those children and to pay exam fees. Now we're talking here about collaboration. And, you know, it can't be that the home is subscribing to one thing and the school subscribing to something else. We have to be involved. And that is a critical component in training and raising our children to be asset to society. And so just the Parent Teachers Association meeting can't be something that is optional. It must be a must to parents. So I want to encourage parents, find time to go to those schools and find out from those teachers how your children are doing. I grew up with the motto of Guyana being one people, one nation, one destiny. I believe that motto still remains the same. Our desire on this program is to see our nation's people continue to grow and develop the next generation being sufficiently equipped. And this is a task for all of us, every one of us, parents, teachers, church. And I pray that the responsibility will rest heavily upon us, that we will not only feel the weight, but ask, what can I do to make a difference? And I pray with God's strength, you and I will do an excellent job in passing on a baton for the next generation of children. This is Choices. May God bless you. See you next time. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.